Greetings, everyone. This is Rock and Roll Smart Connection with the Willie Comic Ground. We have now made through all this week's Marvel books, and we've gotten a brief start on this week's DC books. Now let's continue with this year's competition. Starting off with Unstoppable Doom Patrol, number six. Where we left off, uh, the Doom Patrol had uh, dealt with a. Uh, a corporately created metahuman that uh, was unstable, with its creator revealing that uh, he was he had been inspired by Niles Calder, the original chief's uh, work, basically in uh, ca causing accident using causing the accidents to uh, create causing accidents to create superhumans. Kind of like um, Mr. Glass in uh, in Unbreakable. So we begin training with training. Game of capture the flag between uh, some of the younger, newer meta humans that have been brought in, whom Flex Metallo has has dubbed Flex Force against. Well. The Doom Patrol themselves, the field agents. Um, Starbro is quickly is quickly uh, taken down, followed by uh, followed by Squonk. While Flex states that they have a great, still have a great, still have a lot to learn, the Chief mentions that uh, Flex has done great, has done great work with them. While uh, Niles adds that uh, Flex is the only deserves credit, so does uh, so does the Chief. And apparently, after uh, their recent run-in with Metagen, not. Dr. Collar has realized that uh, it's not his turn to be the chief anymore. Jane is the chief, and he's truly just there, there to help. Then, uh, but, yeah. As they're... As Flex Force nearly wins, wins the game, however... Mento explains that, that they're under attack as Warp leads a crew, a, member, a handful of the members of the Brotherhood of Evil through, through a portal. The combined Doom Patrol and uh, Flex Force deal, deal with them. Uh, among those present are uh, Warp, uh, Warp, obviously, Plasmus, and the quiz. The quiz has every power you haven't thought of. And so Robot Man decides to, to deal with her by uh, naming off superpowers. And it seems that uh, she's, in, she's utilizing imposter syndrome to uh, stop, to, to disable the chief, but uh, once uh, they start naming, once everyone starts naming off powers and basically thinking of powers that, therefore, listing powers that uh, the quiz can't have. Well, Jane pulled out one of her other identities. Squonk is seemingly killed by uh, Doctor Inside Out. Then, uh, Animal Vegetable Mineral, Mineral Girl sends a, uh, a raven to get revenge. But, uh, as the fight goes on, Kipling and the uh, and the other uh, magic users 
pop up to explain that uh, the brother of evil is simply a distraction. The, there are intruders in the graveyard digging up Dorothy. The intruders being Ungun, Monsieur Mala, and General Mortis. Basically, an effort to revitalize Mortis, but uh, Dr. Calder and Robot Man step through a portal um, with, the, with the magic users. But they're too late to stop Mortis. Mortis drinks a uh, vial of uh, wax, a liquefied wax, and uh, emerges from the grave as the Eternal Flame. That is where the issue ends. Something had been brewing with uh, Immortus since the first issue. Kind of been on the back burner, what? The other, which actually kind of smart. Um, one of the things point of note, note, note is that uh, in beginning his scheme, General Immortus killed the brain. Or Range for the brain's death, and it's uh, if I remember correctly, having Mala actually commit the, do, be the one to kill the brain. Moving on though to our next book, we've got the Flash number one. Wally West, the fastest man alive. Been through quite a few uh, trial and tribulation, tribulations. It's been a minute since we've uh, checked in on him. So the issue opens with uh, Max Mercury and. Uh, an impulse uh, running in the desert. Kind of being the speed force guru that he's been for years. Something kind of, there's a, they kind of, he kind of, as, as it's explained, headbutts at a reality on accident, seeing what uh, appears, seeing what appears in the form of a buffalo is trying to communicate. Or, Maybe he just stumbled through his thoughts. But the essence of what I was trying to say being something along the lines of, help me, it hurts. In Central City, Flash is dealing with uh, Grodd. A bunch of uh, Central City police, police officers are uh, put into stasis bubbles and uh, picked up and sent into, in, into the air. When a uh, but a uh, indigo streak appears, which uh, Flash is clumsy as hell. Grodd offers Flash his condolences, having heard the news before he and his uh, guerrilla soldiers leave. Flash answers some questions at the uh, for the press before returning home. Gets his kids ready for school. Uh, his wife, Linda, is... So recently, Linda develops, developed powers. It has been it was revealed that she developed powers as her and Wally were expecting their third child. And... Linda Ute was... Uh, based on the power... That... that uh, Wade, baby Wade's powers were, uh, while he was in utero, um, basically a active for Linda. Now, since Wade, since Wade's been born, well, she's normal again. Feeling kind of, uh, left out. But Wally's got a job working at uh, Terrific Corp. Turns out his boss was a terrific hour was talking with someone that uh, seems to believe there's something wrong with the Speed Force. Something called the Strange Attractor.
But of course, Mr. Kruger has other things go, going on, and so. And the Clintons really need to pass the, the findings along to Wally. Also, Mr. Kruger wants to know about what happened uh, with Grodd, and if everything's all right with the Speed Force. Wally says it is, even though he had a brief uh, hallucination of being in some strange speed dimension where he thinks he shouted the Uncoiler coming. Totally fine. Meanwhile, Jay and I, his kids, his older children, Jay and I are here, are in school. Uh, apparently, Iris has a Uh, as a, a friend named uh, Iris is keeping a journal. Um, but then she's a, a friend that uh, can do can uh, control animals. Great for, great for causing distractions. But uh, Jay hasn't went to the bathroom and come back. Iris manages to find him down in the uh, Boiler room seems to be talking to someone. As they leave, Maxine is uh, Irie's friend. After they leave, another mini uh, rather minuscule uh, form is. Uh, Man shaped or person shaped form is seen uh, just out of the shadows. Grodd once again attacks in Central City while he deals with him, and the indigo streak pops up. Appears to be just a regular young, regular young guy, and uh, something goes horrendously wrong, and he's torn apart by the by the speed force. But uh, while he looks into the whole earth and sees a strange alien alien not so much in the in the uh, meaning of extraterrestrial, just alien as in beyond abnormal. Uh, entity. And that is where the issue ends. Interesting start. Um, kind of perturbed at the uh, at Mirror Master being on the cover and no mention whatsoever of the rogues, but uh, let's just be completely honest. The rogues are the best part of the Flash. Hands down. Always have been. Moving on, though, to our next book, we've got Green Arrow number four. Where we left off, um, while, so Ollie, uh, Connor, and Leanne were, lot, were being dr thrown through time, and uh, turned out that the Legion of Superheroes had found a, a recording that an older Ollie had made saying that Basically, the Green Arrow family is going to be responsible for a lot of people dying, and so because of that, they can't be, they can't be together. In the present, Arsenal and Black Canary are trying to find Ollie, and Ollie, Leanne, and well, Connor. First, starting with uh, Amanda Waller, or. The associates of Amanda Waller. Uh, Roy managed to get a, a, a boon from uh, from Peacemaker. Bit of information. Waller's, you know, they don't they they don't know what's go, what what's going on in that department. Waller likely does, but she's not telling them. Meanwhile, in the future. Ollie disappeared again, this time finding himself face to face with Parallax. 
Parallax is possessed by Hal Jordan. So the issue begins with a, uh, or Parallax when Parallax is possessed Hal Jordan, I should say. The issue begins with a quick recap of Ollie and uh, Hal's relationship. Started off as started off as a rivalry. Ollie suddenly thinking that perhaps they both uh, thought the thought that uh, felt that they they each felt that they they're the ones that pulled off Green best. It, culminating in zero culminating the point that culminates it is zero hour when uh, Ollie shot an arrow into Parallax's chest, stop, seemingly stopping him. Didn't kill him, but at least stopped what he was doing during Zero Hour. Leading to uh, Parallax uh, Hal, Hal eventually taking a greater uh, greater control and managing to uh, reignite the sun after, after it had been uh, burned out and then Hal becoming the Spectre. Uh, in the present of Star City, Roy and Dinah go to a go to a bar, while uh, and well, looking for information. So, generally, the kind of place two adults hang out. We clearly see uh, Doctor Psycho there. I think also Killer Croc, though. I doubt Croc leaves Gotham that often. Looks like Merlin as well. But um, Parallax is allowing all of, all of you to see his family, and fight starts briefly between uh, Brick, the proprietor of the, of the club, and, uh, and Roy. Though it's quickly stopped by uh, the, the arrival of Cheshire after all has been pulled away. In, in the future, the Legion are helping or explaining that time travel in the future is illegal. And um, Connor's, you know, Connor's willing to work with the uh, the Legion, though uh, Leanne, well, Leanne just wants to be sent to find all and be, and you know, all of them be sent home. However, Leanne makes a very good point. Time travel is illegal, but someone's using time travel. Now, someone is messing with time and breaking a, a bunch of the Legion's laws. Which means the Legion has to catch them. Sad and Earl actually agrees that, yeah, that, that's right. Even Ray agrees that it's clear that Tantra was used to manipulate uh, Riero and his family, creating a lie and playing a very dangerous game. Parallax takes Ollie to Star City. At some point, where it's not, where it's burning, and Ollie challenges uh, Parallax so Hal to a uh, to a fist fight. No arrows, no ring. Uh, he wins. Ollie wins. Parallax takes him back. Takes him back to his return to his family. Ollie loses. He's slept there, and well. Ollie wins, and Parallax kind of take, takes a bit of control, and uh, basically just leaves Ollie stranded. Stranded, but not alone, as he finds himself face to face, or rather face to Arrowhead, with Oliver Queen, and much older Oliver Queen. And that is where the issue ends. Now we're getting it. We're, things are getting good. Uh, my. I don't, I don't say this as a criticism, but just a, a point, a, an opinion on the book. The book continues, and yes, Oliver Queen is still the least interesting character, but that's fine because the other characters shore him up. There's Oliver Queen's not a mysterious past kind of character, and he's had he's had on he's had ongoing for so long that there's. Additional secrets just feel like we're just trying to find stuff to do. We're just trying to find things to, to do with them. So yeah, at least at least to me. Moving on though to our next book, we've got 
Power Girl, number one. Kara Zorel. Zorel, not Zorel, just the letter L, uh, of Earth 2, uh, has long been uh, on Earth 1, New Earth, Earth Prime, Earth, whatever, whatever they're calling it currently, the primary DC Earth. Um, operating as Karen Star slash Power Girl. Uh, our origin has been definitively explained. Her place within everything never has never been solidified. It feels a lot like writers are just aren't entirely sure what to do with the character. Hell, he probably don't even he probably even editorial's not sure what to do. Recently, she her powers had a slight upgrade to during uh, Lazarus Planet. Or rather, edition. But uh, so this ongoing be this series begins. Um, there are pro anti alien uh, protesters at the Metropolis Harbor protesting a, uh, a charity benefit on uh, on a yacht. Um, Power Girl is uh, running the auction. In her uh, new civilian identity of uh, Page, or Dr. Page, Page Stetler, Man working the bar also is her friend Omen. But uh, the auction being auctioned off are a handful of. Uh, it's a silent auction, donated donate items of great intergalactic, intergalactic importance and cultural significance, representing other uh, tomorrow's galaxies, other tomorrow's galaxies way that have successfully taken root. Though uh, Power Girl didn't did get them through, we'll just say hazy means. Atlantis is also. Uh, Donated uh, to the auction. And there appears to be a strange uh, item on the on the lot that uh, Power Girl doesn't recognize. She's approached by someone who used to work for the CIA about a job. However, during the uh, during the attempted recruiting and headhunting, um, the the shindig is attacked by by a man, uh, by an alien, by a man by the name of Amalok. Actually, terrestrial um, intends to uh, take back the uh, various items, return them to their uh, planets. But uh, he apparently has, he's got a lot of weapons uh, just for dealing with Kryptonians. Um, explaining that. Uh, Kryptonians deserve to be destroyed, um, and that Kryptonians have a tendency of, uh, as he explains, Kryptonians are parasites, fighting other races, other planets, and declaring them lesser, lesser by their by Kryptonian standards, and therefore deserving of uh, Kryptonian interference in their natural evolution. Amalok's world is dead because of because of Kryptonians. Power looks like she's from a different Krypton. But uh, he says that it matters not. Uh, you know, what's to say that her crypto no, she's from is any different from uh, from the other? And Owen points out that uh, Streaky's gonna have to be fed. But Amalok escapes. A bomb was also left, which uh, Power Girl uh, finds and does away with by teleporting into the Mariana Trench. That was, that's the new change to uh, Power Girl's powers, that she can now make teleportation portal, small teleportation portals. Superman is waiting for uh, Karen and Omen. 
Apparently, he had to smooth things over with the Atlanteans because, well, leaving the bomb in the Marianas Trench was close to all, was almost considered an act of war. And Turan asked, you know, what was she, what she was thinking? And she explained that she wasn't. She panicked. But uh, Turan informs her of a. Uh, of a, uh, something he wants her to look into. A, uh, apparently there's rumors of fatalities in the tropics rumored to be casualties of a Kryptonian virus that uniquely affects humans. Uh, they don't seem to be aware, aware of it, uh, Blue Wars doesn't seem to be aware of it yet, but they will organize and riot with once they are. Power Girl wonders how a virus A, be Kryptonian, or B, uniquely affect humans. And that's part of what Superman wants her to find out from the Forces of Solitude in Bermuda. But, uh, Power Girl initially feels a banishment, but, uh, Superman says that that's not it, it's because he's sending her because Star Labs tested samples of the so-called virus that is her disorder to actually be Kryptonian, specifically the Krypton she's from. And that's why Superman is sending her to investigate. That is, if it is Kryptonian of origin, it's not the suit the Superman family to stop it because otherwise there's nothing to stop it from wiping out humanity. And that is where the issue ends. Alright, nice start. Nice start. This is the first time Kyrol's had her own uh, solo ongoing. Uh, in the mid, mid to late 2000s, um, the JSA was being, being given quite the push. Uh, before Flashpoint kind of said, nope. Uh, it, to the point where there was we, uh, there were two JSA ongoing, ongoings. Um, two teams even, one led by Power Girl, and uh, around that time Power Girl also got her own ongoing. Um, I don't recall who wrote it, but I remember that the covers were all done by Adam Hughes. And I remember I've got some of the issues of it somewhere. It was pretty decent. Moving on though to our last one for the moment, we've got Wildcats number 11. Where we left off, The Wildcats were uh, on the run. Uh, the Cray AI, Michael Cray, Deathblow had managed to take over uh, Dr. Jeremy Stone, aka Maul. But uh, so the issue begins with uh, the, at the Halo, at a Halo press conference in Star City with the introduction of the Spartan line. Questions are are constantly being asked of him, though, because that uh, Halley does not want want to answer. The Wildcats, meanwhile, are at a uh, secret mansion of Marlowe's, and uh, well, Cole's trying to think of a good reason not to just shoot Marlowe. Fairchild interrupts and uh, kind of breaks the pool. Maul is figured out while getting him gets a message to uh, the Wildcats, but is found out and stopped by his, the uh, members of the Seven Soldiers. Well, some of them at least. Backlash wasn't involved, though. This is kind of like, what the hell's going on? Um. Zana and, Gr and Grifter share a moment with Maxine listening from outside the room. Before uh, Caitlin comes along, saying she lost her communicator back in, back in the, cr in the car crash. Maxine get, gives Caitlin hers and. Uh, at Roy Harper's apartment, Batman, Roy, and Black Canary are trying 
are trying to, well, hack the device. Arsenal manages to potentially manages to get it working, and uh, Batman takes it and sets up a meet with uh, Caitlin. With Caitlin, it's a, it's a setup, basically getting the Justice League uh, face to face with seven soldiers. Caitlin was there turns out to be Marlowe and just. Basically, Marlowe in uh, little girl clothes. But, uh, the attack is made on the Halo building as they make their way in. They the Void is back. And the plan has gone straight to shit. That is where the issue ends. But it does continue to be fun. Uh, I honestly, I do hope that somehow Backlash and Warblade switch sides, because and Maul too. But uh, we'll just have to see. Anyways, that's gonna do it for now. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Big shout out to Patreon patrons Andrew Lee. Thank you so much for your support. Links to my Facebook, Twitter. Mastodon, Patreon, and PayPal can be found in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying, live long and rock hard.